put them together and being masculine, womb being feminine, you understand that when you say our father, you're actually saying our father, mother. See? Now he's taking the scripture, he's taking the, he's bending the reality that the scripture is a confirmation to. <clears throat> the reality that the scripture is confirmation to is Jesus prayed and told us to pray. Abba. Even when we pray in us, Holy Spirit prays through us. He, cry, he cries, Abba, Father, not Abun, Abba. They took it and they got entangled with some satanic, mixed up things from the Sufis, which is a, a amalgamation of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and this is where Mary Baker Eady. This is some of the foundation of her religion, Church of Christ Scientists. It's spiritism, it's mysticism. Her, her religion is founded upon spiritism, mysticism, black magic, voodoo, hoodoo, sandaria. <clears throat> They're all the same, different names for the same stuff. And every single one of those things calls itself Christianity, openly. And so again, Mary Piggy Edie's teaching Father Mother Okay, again we typed it in here Father Mother Father Oops Father Dash Mother And we see it nine times on the on the plate. See? <laughs> nine times on the plate. Here in the Our Father's Prayer. And and uh, this is Mary Baker Eady from Ch Church of Christ Science. Her book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, right? Mary Baker Eady, right? So the first time it pops up, <clears throat> it's not there. That's the second time. First time positive was here under the Our Father prayer. Our Father, Mother, God. See? She said, and in, in the second time, here. God the Father, Mother. Christ the Spirit, spiritual idea of sonship. The, the third time, right here. Father, Mother, number eight. Father, Mother is the name for deity. See that? Which indicates his tender relationship to his spiritual creation okay and and then she preaches just like in uh, lessons and truth up here same thing she preaches and the caddy preaches Mary Baker Edie's teachings God separated the mother father one is tender and one has a, a commanding one has a you know authority stern uh, discipline Okay, so again, that's the same thing in Jake's sermon. So here's four, three and four, five. It's here, eternal father, father, mother, God. Six, here, quality, infinite, father, mother, God. Seven, down here, God as father, mother. See that? Eight, telling our God, telling our Father, Mother, God, telling of our Father, Mother, God, gave us a glimpse of heaven, heavenly light. Right? This is a a testimony of somebody praising Mary Baker Edie for revealing to her that God is not just Father, but God is also Father, Mother. Down here, number nine, it says. Test, this is testimony to I had long for all my life a mother a perfect father mother God I had known there was a great lack and the time so a great lack at the time I believed the orthodox world when they say when her people like her and Martin Luther King when they say orthodox Christianity they mean true Christianity okay also the pagan Christianity that, that pretends to be true Christianity when they say Orthodox Christianity, they mean true Christianity. 
they, when Martin Luther King in his writings, when he goes opposite and he was opposed to Christianity, he'll call us orthodox. And I've read it. He says orthodox. And then he goes opposite to what the scripture is saying. Jesus didn't atone for nobody. What are you talking about? So anyway, <clears throat> this is the same thing. She's calling true Christianity orthodox Christianity because true Christianity believes that God is just Abba, Father. False Christianity believes that God is Father and Mother. See? That's uh, androgynous. Okay? So anyway, again, we progress. Because, again, when Mary Baker Edie in this book, when she talks about, I mean, Father, Mother, God, and one, one being discipline to discipline the other one being to be stern to, to, to be tender T.D. Jakes preaches the same thing in this sermon right here when he comp and she also in that book we went over it she's comparing the creation of Adam and Eve sharing the attributes of God's father and mother and he's doing the same thing in this he's preaching from her sermon verbatim almost and then just rewording it of course okay so it's not completely verbatim but he's you know that's what he but what he's doing is he teaching Mary Baker Edie's Christian science false top doctrine and so he is <clears throat> he is saying in that the other gentleman Neil Douglas Klotz in his Sufi uh, rhetoric and so basically what he's saying in this sermon is the same thing she's saying in hers and the same thing that uh, Harry Emily Caddy is saying in hers lessons of truth is the same thing that God Adam and Eve represents aspects of God the male and the feminine part of God <laughs> the male and female part of God that's inside of God that God's masculine infinite. No, he's not. That's why I keep saying he, he, his, his, her. Her and, and hers and she is, is feminine. Him and he and his is male. It's masculine. And they keep contradicting themselves because they keep saying God, father, mother, and then right at the next instant they say he and his. See, it's because they start out Christian and then they can't get that he and his out of out of their con out of the out of the speech you know so that's why they don't call him he she some of the newer people will call God he she and just plainly she so God is the father and God is the mother right and in the same sermon in this same sermon just like her sermon and her book he teaches from that book and he's saying that Comparing the male and the female to one representing God's tenderness, another one representing his sternness. And he's cross wiring it. He's saying the male and the female, they could, they could uh, one could be stern and the other one tender, or vice versa. But that's, that's, that's complete, utter nonsense. Because one person, the mother, if she's a single mother can raise that child with both sternness and tenderness now does that does that make her an androgynous no it doesn't so again if the father is a single father raising a child he can raise that child with tenderness and sternness what he's saying apply implies that one of them that has tenderness the other one don't have it they only have sternness and the other one that has sternness the other one don't have tenderness that doesn't make any sense both parents can both have sternness and tenderness that's equality when you raise your kids and rule your children well you both have to have if you got the setting of a mother and father you both have to have sternness and tenderness for that child both the father just can't show no tenderness at all and let the mother show all the tenderness. That doesn't work. Vice versa doesn't work either. They both have to have both intact. He's saying like they don't. To make it because he's trying to get the people to believe that this represents God is both father and mother. 
because he's both gentle and, and stern. <clears throat> That's a bad analogy. That's a bad analogy. God having sternness and tenderness doesn't make him any more feminine than it makes the mother feminine to be stern or tender. She's feminine because she's created that way. He's masculine because he's created that way. The sternness and the, tender and the tenderness has nothing to do with that. <coughs> it doesn't. So, anyway, we progress. <coughs> And again. So when you put them together, and being masculine, womb being feminine, you understand that when you say our father, you're actually saying our father, mother. Because he is El Shaddai, he is all sufficient. He, he, you don't just think of God as a gender. Because he is complete within himself. As a man, I can decide. She's both genders. He's saying he's both he's both genders. As a man, I can decide blah blah blah, and my wife can do this, and I can do this, and but my wife can do this, and I can do that. Is what he's going to go on to say. <clears throat> but God, he's saying is both genders. Come on. So anyway, look, you just heard him say it. He's quoting. The prayer, Our Father, Mother. This is Mary Baker Eady's prayer. This is also the prayer of the Supis. This dude is into a lot of stuff that ain't God, man. Ab is Father, Daddy. Daddy, what's up, Daddy Bear? You know, that's talking about the Ab. Wound is feminine. Ab wound instead of Alba. So when you put them together, Ab being masculine, wound being feminine, you understand that when you say our father, you're actually saying our father, mother. See it? Okay. Let's go back. Understanding God is not just this big person with a sword that's going to cut your head off or, or beat you or abuse you, but understanding that he loves me. And that I no, no, of course. God loves us. But he's not quoting from the Bible. He's not quoting from the Christian Bible to to make it uh, to represent God loves me. He's quoting from lessons and truth. He's quoting from this book right here, lessons and truth. Lessons and truth. That one statement you just heard him say. He's quoting from. Look, God. Loves. How are you gonna let me do that? Let's take off the big letters. God loves. It's not gonna let me double up. Let's keep it in one more. Nice. It's number 31. Not this number 31. <clears throat> it's, I think it's lesson 331. <clears throat> right here he's quoting this he's saying it's, he's saying that God is not abusive God's not abusive and, the, but, and understanding God loves me look take thought God loves me think these words over and over usually uh, uh, continually for a few days trying to realize that they are true and see what effect it will have on your body and circumstances okay so He's mixing 31 with the other uh, number here that says, that is right in the beginning, it says that God is, it says that heaven is not real. A 
Let's go ahead and see if it pulls up that thing. <coughs> I think it's the first heaven. No. Third heaven. Right here. God then does not as many of us have been taught to believe. So the lady that's writing this, Helen, Helen, uh, Harriet Emily Caddy, a student of Mary Baker Eady, she is saying that we were taught, some of us uh, used to be real Christians, we were taught something about God that's not true. What? He's not, a, in other words, he's not a big personage or man residing somewhere in a beautiful region in the sky called heaven. And she puts heaven in quotations and says, where good people go when they die to see him clothed in, uh, in effigy glory. Now she's going to say exactly what he's quoting from this book. <clears throat> Nor is he a stern, angry judge, only a waiting opportunity somewhere to punish bad people who fail to live out a perfect life so all he's doing is taking this and rewording it and going back to her other thing where she says God loves me right then he's combining it with this right down here my Angelo's favorite this is my Angelo's favorite statement in the book, this book, Lessons and Truth. She quotes it. She says, it's Lessons and Truth, the book, and her favorite part is where it says, God loves me. But it gives an analogy of God that we just read, that God is not someone, a, a personage in the sky. And if you read down, it'll say God is also not a person having qualities. So, which is false. Again, he's not a human person, but he's a spirit person with qualities, apparently. 